Hi, I'm Paul Holinsky, one of the lead software architects for Vehicle Spy X. Our main focus with Vehicle Spy X has been the rich simulation core and scripting experience around it. While you're going to see plenty of examples with the scripting today, first, I'm happy to unveil the beginnings of the graphical network analysis experience we've built on these foundations. We start on a new view we call the topology view. With the increasing complexity of today's vehicle network topologies, we want to provide a seamless experience for managing them. Along the top, you can see the hardware that I have at my disposal. To go online with a physical device, I can activate it, like so, and press the blue button to go online. As you'd expect, this shows us the raw data in the monitor view. Let's go back offline and add a database so we can see the decoded data. In Vehicles by X, adding a database is as easy as drag and drop. You can also use this blue button or the File Open menu to open a more traditional file dialog. We can see that with the database open, the topology view has been populated with a CAN channel inside of a CAN cluster, and an Ethernet channel inside of an Ethernet cluster, as well as all the ECUs for the vehicle along the bottom. Now we can tell the program how our hardware is connected to these channels from the database. Again, this can be done with a drag and drop, or using a manual drop down below. We'll go online again, and here are our decodings. This is the Vehicle Spy X monitor view. While it should look familiar to anyone who's used Vehicle Spy before, we have a couple new features here to show off. Byte highlighting has always been a great tool for analyzing traffic in Vehicle Spy, with gray highlights denoting constantly changing traffic and blue highlights denoting events. Now we have blue to indicate a change upward and red to indicate a change downward. Opening up the PDUs, we see the biggest change. Expanding upward from the PDU, we can see the parent. Opening the parent, we can see the raw CAN frame it comes from. This is a key benefit to the Vehicle Spy X communication stack. We support multiple communication layers, as seen in many AutoZar architectures. With this simple CAN architecture, we can see the CAN raw data link PDU, then the CAN frame that's been matched to it, then the signal PDU that's mapped within it. This simple architecture only begins to show the power of this feature. I'll show a more complex architecture shortly. Column filters allow quick and powerful filtering of the data. I can quickly whittle down the PDUs by name, or I can say that I want to see PDUs where the length is between five and seven bytes. We also have a full filtering suite along the left side. Custom filters can be built here, and we have some standard ones below. If I check this box, for instance, it will hide all unchanging data. The desired and minimum levels you see here allow you to choose which layer of the communication stack you want to see at the top level. One of the guiding concepts in Vehicle Spy X was that the user should be able to work with the data at the protocol level most important to them. If you're looking to monitor an engine parameter such as coolant temperature or requested torque, you likely have no interest in whether that signal is on CAN, FlexRay, UDP, or TCP. In fact, you may not be interested in the groupings imposed by the PDUs at all. In that case, you can select a desired level of signal, and the signals become the top level objects. We can still dig into the signals to see where they come from but it can become an implementation detail now. If a CAN frame is received that does not decode to anything at the desired level, we'll still see it in gray, as before when we had no database added. This means that by selecting the desired level, you don't have to become oblivious to the underlying network if something's wrong. Let's switch to our more complex example where this gets more interesting. As you can see, we can add a buffer file to our topology in much the same way we did our database. It shows up like a piece of hardware and can be treated like one for the rest of the application. This file has the same data as our previous CAN channel, but now in the form of AutoZar SOAD Ethernet PDUs packed into UDP. Let's attach it to the backbone. Going online, we can see much the same display as before. But now, if I dig into a PDU, I can see it's coming from this UDP socket. The UDP datagrams are coming from this IPv4 network endpoint, 
which is coming from this Ethernet frame. If we were a network engineer, we might instead view this from the data link PDU level, where we could see this single Ethernet frame going between two Macs, decode that to any Ethernet traffic, any UDP traffic, signal PDUs within that traffic, and finally, the signals. We also have a signal plot view for these signals. Let's open it up, select some signals like RPM, and battery voltage, and you can see the values being graphed here. We can have this alongside our monitor. Before we dive into scripting, let's finish off our quick tour of the UI by talking about how the scripting engine and core work together with the UI. A REPL for the integrated Python environment is available in the terminal view. You can see how we can use autocomplete hints to explore the API. We can control the entire simulation from here, view signal values, hook up callbacks, control timescales, etc. Full details are available in our included documentation. For now, we can just stop the simulation with app.vehiclespy.stop. And you can see the simulation is stopped. This user experience is completely cross-platform, working across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, with ARM32 and ARM64 builds complementing the traditional x86-64 builds. It's also RPC-based, meaning that the core doesn't even necessarily need to be running on the computer running the UI. And that's a quick tour of the VehicleSpyX UI.